Despite his most recent loss against Marab, Sean O'Malley is an electric fighter with a very unique style. In this video, we'll break down the underlying anatomy and kinesiology behind two of his knockouts. First, we'll start with his knockout against Aljo, and the next knockout we'll look at is against Almeida. Okay, so we've got three different views. We're gonna start with this view of, again, the pull counter he hits against Aljo is really good, times it really well. This first view is the best view for noticing, something that we talk about a lot, and it's very, very subtle, reminds me of Better BF, and it's the hip and shoulder dissociation, but it's really subtle, and the reason it's subtle is because he does something really unique, uh, and I think it just really shows his athleticism. So I'm gonna go really slow, I want you to watch here, and then I want you to also watch his left shoulder, not his striking shoulder. So we're gonna go really slow, so we can see right there, he starts to shift his hips. Okay, so this shoulder is still lagging back, and the right or the left shoulder is starting to follow with the hips. If we go a little more, boom, they switch a little more, and they start to actually face Aljo, and this one keeps going, right? His shoulder retraction with muscles like the traps in the middle, excuse me, the middle trap and the rhomboids, and then the lat and the posterior delt are doing shoulder extension to kind of help with that whipping motion. But you can see that his hips are already facing Aljo, his shoulders are actually following that same plane, but his right shoulder isn't. So this is what kind of makes it unique. The right shoulder is really the only thing that's lagging behind here, and it continues to lag until about right here. And as we know, with that horizontal adduction, muscles like the anterior delt and the pec major are taking advantage of the stretch reflex, that lag behind. So they've been eccentric, eccentric, switched to concentric with that amortization phase and it makes it more powerful of a contraction concentrically to finish the punch. All right, so let's watch that one more time and just watch really close right here. I'm not gonna play at full speed because it's really hard to notice full speed. So hip switches there, left arm follows the hips, the right arm lags behind. Nice whipping motion forward and lands really nicely. All right, so this second view is gonna show us three things, two major things and one small thing. Okay, so we'll start with the hips. We'll move to the rotation of the, the head here, cause a knockout, and then we'll actually look at the shoulder with the follow through. Okay, so a commenter suggested that his coach, Sean O'Malley's coach actually coaches him to step back to produce more force. The only argument that you might have here is that is, is in the place of a, a pull counter, which is what he's doing. He's The nature of a pull counter is to push off of your front leg, create distance, plant, and then rotate into the punch. So if that's the argument you were making, then I would say I agree with you. But to say that he produces more force than he would have by just pushing off his back leg and having his center of mass come forward, then that's not a good argument. I don't think that that would hardly ever happen. But that's not what we're talking about because this is a pull counter. This is a timing movement to create distance. So as he's pushing his leg, or excuse me, pushing his center of mass back with muscles like the plantar flexors and the knee extensors, the, consequently the plantar flexors and the knee extensors also help eccentrically control the weight on his right leg when he steps on it. And then glute max and the hamstrings help extend that hip and rotate lumbopelvic left rotation and then we saw the cascade of effects afterwards when he makes contact. So, over from the last view. So when he makes contact, we talked about this before, this rapid rotation causes the most axonal damage. Uh, we think, as far as we know, to cause that acute loss of consciousness. And then scapular protraction or scapular abduction, if you want to be really particular, it's a component of shoulder protraction. But like we saw with Superlek and Rod Tang, this is a really good demonstration of how really good fighters make sure they follow through. So again, you can see that reverberation go through his shoulder. The scapular muscles are really strong here and they can withstand that amount of impact and then follow through with the punch. So one more time, he pushes off, his center of mass is moving backwards, but to counteract the fact that his center of mass is moving backwards, he plants off of his back leg, creates the ground or force from the ground through Aljo's face, Lots of rotation at the neck, good mechanism for acute loss of consciousness, and then a good follow through at the scapula thoracic joint. So this third view is really just to kind of address again uh, what the commenter said about kind of pushing off of the front leg to create more force with the punch. 
Now, the only, the only way that this would be the case is in the case of a pull counter. I, I responded in the way that I did asking, you mean that he pushes off the front leg to create more power? Uh, and that is true in a pull counter if your argument is that if you plant, if you push off the front leg and plant on the back leg, you can tell he's planted on the back leg because this leg is completely up in the air right now. It's completely left the ground. If the argument is planting off the back leg during a pull counter is more beneficial from a force production perspective than if he had not planted on the back leg during a pull counter and he just was kind of floating in the air and throwing this, then yes, that would be a good argument. But to say that he's producing more force during a pull counter than he would that if he were to throw just like a regular overhand, I don't think that that would stand. Because if you go back and you look at all of the overhands that we looked at, that back leg is pushing off of the ground and creating a forward center of mass movement in general, then you plant that front leg and land the overhand. And in the case of a pull counter, that's probably true, but the fact that this leg is almost completely off the ground right now kind of tells us uh, that a little bit more force or production could be had if he were moving forward. But again, pull counters are all about the timing anyway. So just wanted to show you that one before we moved on to Almeida. All right, so this final view is against Almeida. I really like this knockdown because it shows what athletes do like Sean O'Malley. It's very Izzy-esque whenever we broke his stuff down. You can see that the movements that they do are very opportunistic even though they're not textbook, okay? So we saw a textbook pull counter last view. It's a really good pull counter. So this is not going to be something that, that he's taking advantage of all of the mechanics that he could possibly take advantage of in order to produce more power. One thing he does do better though, once he pushes off this front leg, he actually stops the backward movement with uh, the back leg a little bit more than he did the first time. And you could tell this because whenever he finishes the punch, this front leg is really loaded here. If you remember, his front leg was kind of up in the air on the last few. All right, but if we move up the chain, you can tell that he doesn't actually swing or rip this arm around. So not as much shoulder extension as last time, and also not as much shoulder retraction. So he's not using a lot of thoracic rotation to help him with this punch. Not only that, he doesn't use that whipping motion, that wind-up motion to take advantage of the stretch shorten cycle because he knows that the window of opportunity does not allow for that. He may not have landed this punch had he waited. And in order to get just a little bit more, power out of this, or as much power as he can, you can tell that he's flexing, side bending, and rotating his trunk a lot more. He's using his trunk muscles a lot more than he was in the last, dynamically using them. They were really nice and contracted in the last view because punches don't land unless you do that. But, or there's no power behind them unless you do that. But this, you could, you could see that his hip is extremely internally rotated in the closed chain because it's loaded. This is the byproduct of having all the weight loaded on the front leg. He's flexing the trunk, he's side bending the trunk to the right, and he's rotating the trunk to the right using muscles like the rex abdominis, the right internal, or excuse me, the external, internal and external obliques, and then the right quadratus lumborum for the side bending, and even the lat for side bending as well. So let's just go through it really slow stops the forward momentum, or stops the backward momentum, sorry, loads his front leg, doesn't swing as much through with his right shoulder, doesn't take advantage of the stretch shorten cycle, lands it right on the chin, and then has a lot of trunk movement to finish that punch off. All the way through. Nice. And everybody knows what happens after that. Now, hopefully, you'll start to be able to pick apart some of these movements whenever you're watching the next fight. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.